Breaking the commandments. Breaking the law. Father, I'm sorry. Forever leaving your side. Forgive our forefathers for what they did. Say we broke all of your commandments. We played the harlot. We did just so wrong, so wrong. We committed adultery. And for doing this, say we fell as a nation. Say we broke your law while you was on suffering and being patient. Father, I'm sorry. I'm speaking for Israel. With my crown uncovered, face to east. east. Collapse on my faith for knees. knees. No food in my belly as yes, I pray for you. Uh. Pray for me. Uh. And we both be praying for our ancestors. Yeah. From the past, even unto the present. Uh, but we still don't know no better. Uh, better be playing with the most high. 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 Toward our brethren the evil lie. High. And when we speak of the nation well, needing no, peace, no, they be like, why? For what? Did you really repent, brother? Then where that's at right now? Uh. Repent. One finish, once you did it, now it's the lifestyle. Yeah. But if there be any God, please understand. understand this. There'll be a path, and you gon' find it. Ain't gon' lead back to the holy land. Nah. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. pleasure. Gotta lose the bands of wickedness off his father. We desperate. desperate. Got a lot of reasons to atone. Big trees into the bone. Now it's much like when the father take his son keys to the home. We out here stranded. Finding out exactly who planned it. Getting reprimanded, Bless and it's a blessing to understand it. Yeah. We left right. our land a long time ago. Our forefathers did it. We, left we never meant to hurt you, hurt you. We never meant it. We never meant it. But Father, I will blame you for kicking us out of our land. I hear law. And sending us through tribulation. We really deserved it. Captivity in Babylon. Father, we are part of God. We are part of God. We just want to come back home. On the back of our neck, ain't no respect. Examine what will be flawless. Let correction connect. That's what I call letting the record reflect. Come about that maze, stacking up on all this knowledge, but ain't changing our ways. So on the seventh month of the ninth day, let us all atone. Come together on the tenth day, and then bang, we get our grub on together. Better not be walking alone. Lucifer be the brand off with you. Where such and such go? I don't know. Father, please protect us, be our shield and our buckler. We've seen John 14 and 15, and now we're showing you we love you. Looking back at our forefathers, trying to see how they did it. Scoring the countenance of a higher? Now you gotta be kidding. Idolaters and the false gods, Yasha Allah was tripping. Idols can't see, hear, or smell. Ain't alive and ain't kicking. But in the future description, it says it's finna be different. I believe it, cause this new breed hate religion. 
Let's get this repentance. Let's get this repentance. Matthew yeah. 6 and 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have had their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head with oil and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Exodus 20 and 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I thy power am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, hate me, hate me. Please hear my prayer. We're not in that. We seem to get shot so many ways. We understand that. We understand our own blemish. We got the fight. We understand the reason for our sacrifice. We think you'd be gone. We are moving. High holy day. You know what I'm saying? A high holy day. But we ain't acting like we sorry enough. Let's do this with all our heart, I am. And the turn for our ancestors and for ourselves. We don't woke up in a war. Leviticus 23 and 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also, on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your soul, and offer up an offering made by fire unto thy power. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make atonement for you before the Most High, your power. Your power. Welcome to the Hebrew state of being. We are your humble, humble, humble servants and hosts for tonight. I am Kyle, and off tonight is the young warrior, Jordan, a young hunter, and my sister Tamara. She's in the building, all praises. I see Nicole is in the building, your wine's in the building, and I's in the building. Man, tonight is a very special night. We are going through chapters 15 and 16 of Leviticus where we are getting the Day of Atonement put in place. But then we're going to take a look at Exodus 33 and look at Joshua, right? Who was the one that brought us over to the promised land. We're going to understand how zealous, zealous he was for the Most High in the temple. And as we look at when Yahshua came to destroy that Sanhedrin, there were the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the zealots. The zealots were the zealous ones, the, the ones that were hardcore to the word, the letter of Bible. Your Pharisees and Sadducees, uh, you know, some other things. But tonight I just wanted to set the tone because we are, even though we have already gone through our process of atonement of this year, uh, we've gone through our feast day, we have to understand that atonement and the mindset of atonement is something that it should be upon us at all times. And I'm not necessarily just saying of the affliction part, right? Because we know atonement, we're supposed to be thinking of all the things we've done unto people and that we've harbored or whatever anger, whatever pain, whatever it is, whatever transgressions we have done from the time we can uh, uh, remember to this date. And as this year, my sister added into it for anything we're going to do, because we obviously, we flesh, <laughs> right? So, so atonement is understanding that only one way can we be cleansed. And that's to bring our filthiness unto the Most High as a sacrifice. Mm. So when we are in the thought, in the mindset of atonement, we are in the mindset of, relinqu of of asking for forgiveness of our sins, of our transgressions of the law, of our losing sight of his direction, of the way, right? Not just the direction, but as Yasha said, the way. Well, that's so important in this particular hour because everything is popping off, right? It is from Far East Asia, right? <laughs> you got China ready to go to war, but not just China going to war is happening in the Far East. You have volcanoes and earthquakes that's also going. You got 
flooding that's happening through China. I mean, you got some serious natural disasters going as they are making their um, making their uh, 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 what's the word I want to use here poetically waxing. Um, they are making their bid to be the next world power as they are making their bid to bring war because you don't get to be the head unless it's war as we understood how we got our land back from the Canaanites or what Joshua, Yahshua did, right? How he went into Jericho with the father in seven times. There's that number again that we've been understanding through Leviticus is the completion. It's the number of completion, the number seven. So when Joshua goes around seven times, it is the completion of that those walls coming down and us taking over our promised land. Seven times in the, as we are looking through Leviticus and our priesthood, there are seven times they would do the process in order to cleanse the person or cleanse the offering or to use the blood seven times around the altar in order for it to be completed. That the process of cleansing has been completed. That's why he does it seven times. Well, again, the reason why we're talking about this and the reason, not just the fact that we are in the chapters of Leviticus and is speaking about that right now. Right now, we are in a global pandemic. We are in war and rumors of war. We are in the midst of natural disasters that has, hasn't been seen here before. So in this time, as we see all these things coming to a head, to a crescendo, we must understand that as our prophecies from our prophets all the way to John and our revelations, that these signify a time of Jacob's trouble. And in that time, Jacob is supposed to be waking up. His dry bones is supposed to be living. Oh, let me plug this up real quick, guys. Hold on. These dry bones are being the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, is coming through these dry bones of the diaspora of Judah and all the 12 tribes across the four corners of his pillars, this earth. So as, as we understand that these things are coming to a crescendo and that our scripture says it is time for us to be in our homes in safety, teaching our kids so they can be as a foretime, knowing the scripture and speaking the scripture, Logan, right? So this is a perpetual mind state that we should be in of atoning for sins and trying to make sure that we don't commit any more sins. We, we should not be hyperbolic right now. We should not be afraid that they're talking about Russia has hacked into all of the United States government's computers. Not the fact that they're saying Chinese ships and Russian ships are surrounding the United States in tactical movements. Or that China and the U.S. Are, are positioning themselves in the Asian Sea, right? In the China Sea, right? South Pacific Sea. Where my sister informed me that is where they held a lot of gold over there, you know. So as we see everybody's jockeying for positions, what position are you jockeying for in this hour? Because as the sex, next song we're going to play, as this next song we're going to play, that day, you know what I'm saying? We knew that day was coming. Right. And and I want everybody to be in the mind state of this as we get ready to go on our scripts, because we know that the day is coming. We see the signs on the wall. What position are you jockeying for in this last hour? In the end of the Gentile rule, what position are you jockeying for? And it should be a position with the most high following his Ten Commandments and being cleansed through your tongue. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. I know. I know. Oh, yeah, the artificial sun. Yeah. They got two of them. <laughs> I know. 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 I know
you in the mind say because this day is coming we have to be prepared not talking about uh preppers where they got you know months or years worth of uh, uh, uh supplies to eat no we're talking about the supply of grace and mercy tonight many times we don't rely on grace and mercy we rely on our own mind say as we're going to read in our 15 this is going to be a very sensitive uh, chapter, right? And uh, for all the kids that may be paying attention tonight, uh, uh, chapter 15 is going to talk about some very adult things. And uh, uh, most High telling me I need to prefix this as we're going in because we are so blessed to have so many children that are tuning in to us at Hebrew State of Being. Um, but this is going to be about um, STDs, parents. So let's just uh, make sure everybody's clear on where we're going tonight, as you can explain it to your child as they're, they're sitting next to you. So as we start, it says, um, and the Most High spake unto Moses and to Adon, saying, speak unto the children of Yasharala and say unto them, when any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue, he is unclean. As we went through the last chapters, we understood that unclean was through blood. We, we truly went into the aspect of understanding that the woman being off for seven days, the understanding of once she has a child and the trespass sin offering that she has to make because of the blood, because it was an issue of the blood, that that menstrual cycle once a month is cleansing, it is dead blood, it is cleansing the woman of all things. So that is why it's considered unclean because of the blood issue. 
Now, when we also went into our chapters, we expressed that it was not only uh, against the law, the biblical law, to to uh, uh, for a man to be around his woman during that time of the after the birth, because it was a blood issue, that it was not a time to be able to have sexual intercourse, and that we looked at it sex. We looked at it. Um, we looked at the um, timing, the section of time that is needed. It is a six to eight weeks, which actually coincides directly with scripture. So the scientific time that it is healthy, right, for a woman to be able to engage in such things equals the science. So the biblical and the science is the same. But yet we understand that many people from the outside looking in say, well, how can a woman be uh, unclean when she had just given birth to something beautiful? She's just given life. Well, we understand that it is through scripture, the issue of the blood. So when we find that we don't adhere to the law, chapter 15 comes right after that, right? Right after we get the the uh, um, the law for us to the time frame in which we should not have intercourse after the blood or, or the reason why we should not be having intercourse during the cycle time. Now in the chapter 15, we come right back with understanding the disease that happens and how to cleanse the men that do not follow the law that run in and do the things that they should not do in the time frame that was allotted by the law. So when we're speaking about the running issue, the running issue comes from sexually transmitted, from doing things in that time frame. So the father says here that, and this shall be his uncleanliness in his issue whether his flesh run with his issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue, it is his uncleanliness. Every bed wherein he lieth that hath the issue is unclean, and everything whereof he sitteth shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. So that's anybody that touches the man that has now gotten the venereal disease. Well, whatever disease it may be, there's a plethora of ones that can be attributed depending on your biological and that person's biological uh, makeup. So, and it says here in six, and he that sitteth on anything whereon he hath that, uh, where that hath the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even, which means even. And he that toucheth the flesh of him that hath the issue shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be clean until the even. And if he that hath the issue sit upon him that is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be un and be unclean until the evening. So it's the same thing, the same law that applied to the woman that happened to be going through her cycle. So says to the unclean man. So as we see, there is no separation because of man and woman. It is clean and unclean. And it just so happens that because the woman has the power of bringing life, that she has a cycle once a month that has to be cleansed and renewed just in case that life is brought forth. So in that time frame, she is considered unclean, not that she is shunned away, not that she's not loved, not that she is, you know, locked in some uh, iron dungeon as the naysayers about our scripture would like to put on. They like to say that we are chauvinistic and how could we do such a thing to a woman? Well, it applies both ways. Unclean is unclean in the father's eyes. So, and it says, and what saddle soever he rideth upon that hath the issue shall be unclean. And whosoever touched anything that was under him shall be unclean until the evening. And he that breath, that beareth any of those things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And whomsoever he touches that hath the issue 
and hath not rinsed his hands in water, he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And the vessels of earth that he touched, meaning clay pots, um, which hath the issue, shall be broken, and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. And when he hath, and when he that hath an issue is cleansed of his issue, then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing, and wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in running water, and he shall be cleansed. So after he's treated, or after he has been uh, uh, cleansed of his discharge, he still has to go seven more days. He still has to cleanse everything for seven more days, not come in contact with anyone. And it says, and when he had the issue cleansed the bathroom and running water, I'm sorry, 14. And on the eighth day, he shall take to him two turtle doves, two young pigeons, and come before the Most High unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and give them unto the priest. And the priest shall offer them one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Most High for his issue. Now, we obviously know that uh, uh, venereal diseases aren't just gotten because gentlemen are, are having intercourse in a time where a, a woman is doing her cycle or blood is present. Well, let's, you know, we're going to hold off at 15 and we're going to take a look at blood, right, and cause of venereal. So when we look at um, sexually transmitted diseases, sexually transmitted infections can be caused by Bacteria, and as you see, the ones that are bacteria are gonorrhea, syphilis, and chlamydia. The parasites, trechomonasias, um, right? And then there's the virus, which is what corona started as. Then it became a disease, and now it's something that we can't ever get away with, like herpes. But yeah, yeah, yeah you know, anyway. Um, viruses is like the human papillo papilloma virus, genitalia, herpes. Huh. Okay, so we understand that obviously a man can be uncleansed by being very dirty himself and that he doesn't necessarily have to have um, a woman during her cycle. It doesn't necessarily have to be a part of that process to receive that because we understand if a person is not fully cleansed out as a woman or if a man has multiple partners because we have to understand that back bacteria, right? Bacteria is one of the main ones. Now, bacteria is when you are, is your biologics. It's the, um, just like we have fish, right? We have, um, you know, I'm deep into to, to fish, as y'all saw the pond and everything, right? Well, when we're cleaning out the pond or the fish tank, it is known that you do not clean, clean out the biological balls. Now, there's um, in the filter, you have um, carbon filters. You have um, some other type filters. You have many different layers. They call them um, materials, you know, that you use for water to be cleansed. Just like naturally, our water goes through streams or it goes through rocks. It goes through different processes that cleanse the water for us to drink. So the fish, though, they have to have a certain amount of bacteria. They can't live in a non-bacterial environment. They can't have too much because it kills them. But the right combination, the balance of bacteria is needed. So when you clean the filter and you're giving them new water, you have to keep the biological balls that have kept the, the, the that holds in the, the biological masses, the bacteria that holds in the bacteria. You do not wash those. You still allow everything else to be cleansed, and a little bit of that biological bacteria is what they need in order to live. So when a, a man has multiple partners, so now we're going back to why the law is in place. In our Ten Commandments, it is telling us men not to be whoremongers. Well, this is whoremongering. When you have multiple partners, it is whoremongering. 
right? You're not married to them. They're not part of your concubine. They're not your wife. They are multiple partners, right? So you are passing on the biological bacteria of different partners. So then that affects your body because now you are being over the bacteria. You have bringing in so many different bacteria into your body that you're now, your body can't fight off the foreign or alien bacteria that's in your body. So we understand that the these Ten Commandments, no matter what anybody says about these laws, statutes, and commandments, they are set for our health. They are set for our livelihood, for us to live well, for us to be able to, to, to live righteously. It says there are so many agendas hidden in plain sight. Our people will perish from lack of knowledge. They don't want to be, they won't, they don't want to heed the most high. Oh, praise us. Say, yes, you're absolutely right. Say la be on our Instagram. Exactly. We don't ever want to make the connection of our scripture to the things that we deal with in this world. You get a disease, you get this, you get that. You say, no, I got to go to a doctor. A doctor's going to heal. Not understanding that. You have broken a law. You have broken a law that was set in place for your health, for your well-being. As you saw in 15, let me go back right quick to our 15. As you see, even after he was healed from it, he still had to acknowledge that the Most High had healed him. So he had to make a sacrifice of two turtle doves and two young, or two young pigeons in order for him to make the connection that the Most High healed you and cleansed you. We're missing that in our society because we believe in pharmaceuticals. We believe that everything can be answered through science, negating the fact that we are tres um, trespassing the laws. And it says, And if any man's seed of compilation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until even. So we, we know what we're talking about now, right? And every garment and every skin wherein is the seed of compilation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the even. So it's talking about now when you're, let's, let's see what they and just for giggles, let's see what they use for compilation as their definition. Hebrews 7902. And it is skiba, a skiba, a skiba, right? And skiba compilation lie carnally for him. Not translated, it says act of lying, layer, coding, act of lying of sexual relations or layer, right? So when we are talking about when his seed of compilation comes out, we're talking about the sperm, right? Whether it be in any form or fashion, whether it be from masturbation or an actual intercourse, when these things happen, you are unclean until the evening and must wash everything, right? <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying they <laughs> so wait, wait, let me go back as people debate about uh, uh, what things can and cannot be done and what things cannot and be found. It is what you look for. It is what you decide to uh, uh, acknowledge in the most high because the most high has written in everything. There's nothing new under the sun. Right. So and it says. um and a woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. So I found this like this is a very interesting, right? Because I was watching, I watch a lot of documentaries. And one of the documentaries, these guys went to um, Ethiopia and one of the, the priests, um, the guy wanted the priest to bring him into the um into their temple right to show him through the temple and the priest guy and i thought he just said it to be honest with you guys i just thought he said it because he didn't want to bring the oh i see my son's in the building from your film 
I just thought he didn't want to bring the European into the temple. But what he told the European was, my wife and I made love last night, so I cannot go into the temple now. And I was like, wait, that's your wife, though. Right? Like, that's your, you, you're a priest, and that's your wife. And you can't go into the Holy of Holies, the temple, until the evening. Mm. I was like, wow. That's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, now when you want to bring in the worldly part, you say, well, if we're supposed to multiply, right? Be fruitful and multiply, right? Well, then how is this now when we lie together, we are dirty. We're unclean. Well, let's understand what we mean by the unclean. We're not clean enough to go before the most high. You are not clean enough to go before him. We're going to, 16 is going to speak more about that when we talk about atonement, when we get into that, right? So as it's saying here, with the seed of compilation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. And if a woman have an issue and her issue be in her flesh, be blood, she shall be put apart seven days and whosoever touched her shall be unclean until the evening. And everything that she lieth upon in her separation, once she's gone, not the bed that she lied in, not the bed in compilation, um, but the uh, separation shall be unclean. Everything also she shall sit upon shall be unclean. Now, this is a very perfect thing, right? I want to pull it. Hold on, hold on. I didn't pull this up, but I want to pull this up because it's time. Uh, I, I, I can't believe I didn't pull this up. I should have known. I'm beating myself, y'all. Don't pay no attention to me. I'm just beating myself up right quick. Right? <laughs> so, so, um, hold on. so there was a story, right? And I'll give y'all the story that I'm, I'm looking up. The uh, story is about um, Laman um, and Jacob, right? When Jacob was leaving with Leah and um, Sarah, right? And um, and Leah and Rachel, I'm sorry, Leah and Rachel. And Laman, their dad, um, was trying to get at him because they didn't want Jacob to leave, right? He didn't want him to leave with all things and the daughters. Well, um, hold on. Uh, was it Rachel? Yeah, Rachel. Um, okay, scripture, Laman. I know I put a lot in there, but there we go. <laughs> Laban. It was Leah, all right. So we're going to go over to um, 2931 right quick. So understand, this act of being uncleansed, Leah used in her favor to save everybody because Laman was into divination. Laman believed in multiple gods and Laman had a skull, right? <laughs> that he put a tongue in voodoo, it's straight voodoo. So Laman had a skull that he put this coin on the tongue and the skull would tell him visions that whatever he asked, this skull would show him a vision of. So he didn't want, um, well, Leah didn't want the father to know how to catch up with him. So she stole his head. <laughs> right? Let me go. So she stole her, stole his head. So then Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Um, fulfill her week and we will give her, give thee this also for a sack, for, for the service that on which thou shalt serve with me 
for seven other years. Jacob did so fulfill the week and gave Rachel, gave him Rachel, his daughter, for his wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel and um, his daughter, Bala, his handmaid and maid, and went on unto, and, uh, and he went in also unto Rachel. And he loved also Rachel more than Leah and served him and served with him yet seven other years. And when the Most High saw that Leah was hated, he um, opened her womb and Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son and she called the name Reuben for he said, surely the Lord, the Most High had taken upon my affliction. Now, therefore, and husband, let me go down a little bit. Let me go to the next chapter. Here we go. So here you go. 30. And now, though thou wicked needs be gone, because thou saw longest after thy father's house, yet whereof hast thou stolen my gods. So Laban has caught up with Jacob. And he's telling him that you stole my gods. Actually, his daughter took the head with the tongue in it, right? And it says, and Jacob answered and said to Laban, Laban, because I was afraid, for I said, preadventure thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me. With whomever um, thou findest thy gods, let him not live. Before our brethren discern that what is thine is with me and take it to thee, for Jacob knew not that Rachel has stolen them. So Rachel has stolen. So Jacob is saying, I ain't do none of this. I didn't steal your gods. I just took over his mind. You know, I didn't want you to tell me I couldn't take the two daughters, my two wives. He says, if any man here has his gods, you know, you can do as you wish with him, right? So he says, for Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban and Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the two maid servants' tent, but he found them not. Then um, then went he out to Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. Now, Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture and sat upon them. And Laban searched all, all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise up before thee. For the custom of a woman is upon me. And he searched, but not, um, but found not the images. So what she's referencing to her father is that I am on my cycle right now, and I'm not to be touched. And anything that I sit on, you cannot touch or you will be unclean. Now, Laban's already looking for his gods. He's not trying to take no chances with being unclean. Mm. I love the way that that played out, right? So she used what the most high law was in order to protect her family. All right. Yeah. So now let me go back. And it says, everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. And whosoever touch her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And whosoever touch it 
anything that she set upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. And if it be on her bed or in or on anything whereon she sitteth, when he toucheth it, he shall be unclean until the even. If any man lie with her at all, and her flowers be upon him, he shall be unclean seven days, and all the bed wherein he lies shall be unclean. So now we're talking about the process of men being upon a woman in her cycle. They put it as flowers. Nice of them to use it as that, right? But it is an unclean act. And it is the act that gives us venereal diseases. 25. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, out of her seven days, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanliness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. Oh, Kendra in the building. Shalom. Tell my brother I said shalom. Every bed wherein she lieth all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation. And whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean as the uncleanliness of uncleanliness of her separation. And whosoever toucheth those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. We say, wow, this looks like a lot, right? The Most High is, is going through some extreme things towards these people. See, if, we, if, we, if we're in our flesh, we're worried about the people that got to go through this. If you're in your flesh, you're hearing me and you're reading this and you're saying, oh, why they got to be like that with a woman? Or oh, why, man, why it's got to be so much? Why anything you touch? Why it's got to be so dramatic? But when you go to a hospital, a doctor got gloves on. They got air control to try and keep the temperature down to keep bacteria down. You walk into a hospital, it is a sterile facility. It's supposed to be, right? Or people will die. <laughs> so with your understanding, the father is trying to lay out how to keep a sterile environment. It's not about us. It's about understanding that this is, he's wanting a sterile environment so that infections, bacteria, do not infect us or spread. And on the eighth day, she shall take them to her two turtle doves or two young pigeons and bring them unto the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer to one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her before the Most High for the issue of her uncleanliness. Right. So we saw this is the same for the man and for the woman. No difference. Right. Uncleanliness is uncleanliness. There's no color, no uh, 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 um, separation of gender, only because of how the blood can affect us. So all of these things are only separated because how blood can personally affect affect the male or the female. Thus says ye. Separate the children of Yasharala from their uncleanliness, that they die not in their uncleanliness when they defile, when they defile, when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. So again, we understand that these seven days and all these things and all these processes and you were unclean was because you could not stand before the Most High in his tabernacle. And the Most High is saying that my tabernacle is amongst the people. And y'all are doing all of this wickedness. You must atone to be in the midst of my tabernacle. Well, now the tabernacle is us. We are the temple. The tabernacle was taken down because we profaned it so bad. So bad that Yasha, his child said, every brick will be will be gone from this place. As he told his 
Saladin, his scribes, that were asking, what else is going to happen, Most High? I mean, Yahshua, well, what's going to happen here? Yahshua said, worry about this right here. And it says, this is the law of him that hath an issue, and of him whose seed goeth from him, and is defiled therewith. So the fact that your seed leaves you, you are now defiled. And what are we, what is defilement? You can't stand before the most high. Oh yeah, you can go out and talk to other people and do whatever you think you want to do. But if you're trying to be in the spirit of the most high, then you understand that you are unclean in this time. And of her that is sick of her flowers and of him that hath an issue of the man and of the woman and of him that lieth with her that is unclean. So we're understanding that uncleanliness and defilement is the fact that we are our flesh, that the most high is holy. He has no flesh. He's not man nor woman. To be in his spirit, he wants your spirit cleansed, not the sins of your flesh upon it when you stand before him. He wants you to take standing before him as serious as you take your diseases or not getting a disease. As serious as you take going to the doctor, believing that the doctor is going to save you. As you follow what the doctor tells you, how to take the prescriptions. The father wants you to follow his prescription. When we understand why it's so important, it is because of the blood. When we look at the definition of venereal, relating to sexual desire or sexual intercourse, well, you know, we, 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 we hear that, right? But also, we understand that uh, venereal, meaning, now let's just go here, what does the name venereal mean? of or relating to sexual pleasure or indulgence resulting from or contracted doing sexual intercourse venereal infections relating to or affected with venereal disease a high venereal rate now they use their own words to define the definition right like my sister's a teacher like we we you understand that you're not supposed to use the word to define the word right well when we look at the the Etymology of, of venereal, right? So when we look at the, the word venereal, it uh, comes from who? Pi root, right? Which means uh, proto-Indo-European is what pi stands for. Proto-Indo-European, um, meaning Japhet. <laughs> so this is the word of Japhet. When we understand that this word venereal disease, instead of calling it what it is, a bacterial disease, an unclean disease, a blood disease, because that's what it's affecting. They have gone into their uh, uh, Latin sexual desires, their uh, iniquity, to come up with this word, venereal, that... Let's look at this. All forms of venom... Uh, So venere means 
pursuit <laughs> of sexual pleasure. I just thought this was real funny, right? So instead of acknowledging the most high, acknowledging uncleanliness, you have created a word to describe a disease that comes from a Latin term of wanting to be unclean. I mean, I may not, you know, catch everybody's ear or, or, or show to everyone how full of iniquity this, this culture that we're in, that it does not, it's all lies. The origin of STDs is bacteria. It is not because you have a desire to have sex. The Most High wants us to procreate. But understanding that in our procreation, we are doing a fleshly thing that makes us unclean. It is not to look down upon. It is not to say that, oh, the Most High is saying that we are not supposed to engage in such things in his order. Not at all. But understanding his order is what is needed to be done. That these, the world is going to give you the lie of it being all about your desires. Most I say it's not wrong for you to desire the beautiful women that I have set forth for you. It's not wrong for you to desire the, the handsome young men that I have put forth before you. It is for you to do it in my order. I've given you the opportunity to have the best fruit. You, you, you go all across the world to find the best fruits and the, the ship of men. You, you, you look at the wonders of the world with the waterfalls and all that he's created. And it's all for us in his order. The blood is everything. The blood that they cannot or do not have an answer for since they have not created it. Let's get to this blood. What is blood? Blood. A red liquid that circulates in the arteries and veins of humans and other vertebrae animals carrying oxygen to the carb and carbon dioxide from the tissue of the body. Remember, we are a carbon-based body, right? That that so as it tells you here what blood does. Blood is the red liquid that moves the oxygen and the carbon through our bodies, right? And um so when we go down, and we're looking at what does blood do for the body? The blood transports oxygen and nutrients around the body and removes cellular waste, removes waste among a range of other vital functions. Plasma makes up 55% of blood content. Blood groups are categorized based upon antibodies and antigens in the cell. Diseases. Um, I mean, um, anemia, <laughs> blood cancer, and clots are all potential disorders of blood. It's all resorts of uncleanliness of the blood. They say we have been reading how important the blood is to cleanse the temple. Well, if we are the temple and the blood is already in us, y'all get where I'm going? The blood is already in us. So then it is our job for the blood in us to be cleansed. That is our priestly duties as being a priest over our own bodies, over our own temples. And keep me in keeping it clean, the Most High has given us the law of uncleanliness and how to make sure that we don't cross these bloods or as the medical world would say, cross contaminate. Our laws that have been set for us <laughs> cannot have been written by man. When we truly dive into the meaning and the understanding of every word that is in the Torah, we understand the depths of it that no one that was not inspired by the Most High could have possibly written these things down. And when you go into the depth of them and see how, as we understand the cleanliness of blood, that Leviticus laws are not grievous unto us. It is to keep our blood cleansed, to keep us clean amongst him so that he can answer our prayer. 
and that he understands that we're going to do some things. We are made of flesh. As the Most High said to know that man would not always walk with him. So our days are numbered to 120. All right? So let's go on to this 16. Let's, let's get it. <laughs> yes. You know, I was uh, going through this chapter, man, and, you know, looking for precepts, you know, to 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 edify this word. And I, I wound up getting a phone call from my brother, Yachanan, and it was actually the precepts. And I told him I was going to tell him I was going to use it. So he, he knows I ain't plagiarized. Right? <laughs> so, you know, what we talked about was how our young men have to stand in the light of the most high that we have to as elders have to really press upon our youth the power that they have as a youth as a human being right as as a child of the most high as a daughter of zion that being in the most high's laws isn't a grievous thing. It is the only way to success. It is the only way for peace. It is the only way to win the wars, the battles that are at hand constantly. And I was like, you know, I, you're absolutely right. And as as we're talking about the 16 and the, and the atonement, it's it's making our our kids need to understand how serious atonement is as we are understanding how serious a monthly cycle is and how serious sex is in a society how how over uh emphasized it is that what we have to emphasize in this hour is the atonement the the asking for forgiveness of sin because that goes right back to disease. That goes right back to James chapter 5, verses 20 through the end of 26, verse 26. That keeping our blood clean is how our elders were able to pray unto the Most High and how the person ill could easily identify what they need to repent and walk away from that would allow their bodies to heal. If we're cross-contaminating blood, if we're cross-contaminating bacteria, if we're cross-contaminating ourselves and not understanding how sacred this temple and the blood that is in it, if the blood of Yasha is what our salvation is, if it was his blood, one man's, one fleshly body's blood was enough to give salvation to the world. We have to understand how important our blood is and how he made it so important through the rituals, you want to call them that, the processes that the priest had to go through with the blood of our sacrificed animals for our sins. And it says, verse 16, I mean, chapter 16, verse 1. I see in the building, my brother Ronald, that instilling these laws into our youth is the current, is the power, it is the juice that will build them in the fashion of the Most High where he can reside in their temple just like he resided in a tabernacle amongst the 12 tribes. And the Most High spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Most High and died. Now remember, the two sons did not properly, they wanted to use the incense to burn other things other than what the Most High said burn unto him. The Most High specifically stated what frankincense and things that he wanted to be done with his censers. They did not, so they were struck and killed in front of the congregation. And the Most High said unto Moses, 
spake unto Adon, thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. Wow. So the Most High is telling Moses, go and tell Aaron, don't be coming in and out at all times into the holy place where the, and then be upon the veil of the mercy seat of the ark because you will die. Well, hold up. Aaron just became a priest. He even lost two sons for this priesthood. And now he can't go in? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And it says, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. So what he's telling Moses to tell Aaron is that, yo, this is my house. And I will go upon my seat at any time. So you have to come at an uh, ordained time because that's where I reside and you will die if you sit where I reside in my presence. Ooh. Mm. Thus shall Adam come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. So he's saying, okay, now let Aaron know when he come in and I'm on his mercy seat, he need to bring a bullock with him for uh, and uh, for his sin offering and a ram for his burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle with and with the linen mitri, the head wrap, shall be um, shall he be attired. Those are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and put and so put them on. Mm. So now we understand that his mitri, his head wrap is holy, that the linen um, clothes that he's wear, his, his uh, undergarments have to be linen. They're gird, they're so they call his girdle, which basically means his underwear. And they have to be linen because these are now holy garments because he's in front of the mercy seat. He's, he's in front of the Ark of the Covenant. So tell him, Moses, tell Aaron, even though this is the temple that I built for you guys to be priests, and he's the head priest, that he can't just walk in and out this house. When he comes into this house, he has to make a burnt and a sin offering for his sins before he can walk in this house or he will die because this is where I reside and this is where holiness resides and if you come unclean you will die so first he must cleanse himself with his burnt and his sin offering once he has done that he must put on clean linen as holy garments to stand before him and fifth and in five and he shall take of the congregation of the children of Yasharala two kids of goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself and make an atonement. Here it is. And make an atonement for himself and for his house. But y'all don't have that many comments tonight. I must be hitting y'all deep, huh? I don't know. Oh, now. Nah. Come on. Where you at, Nicola? Tell me what you're thinking about this. Tell me where your mind is when y'all are understanding how important the blood and the uncleanliness and the cleanliness is. If you got a question, bring forth it tonight, right? And it says, And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself and make an atonement for himself and for his house. So our process of sacrificing is for atonement. That's the washing away of our sins as we repent from doing. That means that we don't do them anymore. So we have atoned. And he shall take two goats. Yes, and he shall take two goats. And present them before the Most High at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. And lot one lot of the of the most say one lot for the most high, 
and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Adon shall bring the goat upon which the most high lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. Whoa, so Aaron shall bring upon which, or shall bring a goat upon which the most high lot fell. Mm. And the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the most high to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat unto the wilderness. Now, this, we when we go through, uh, oh, praise Nicola, when we are looking at the atonement, right, and the process of scapegoat and the process of sacrificed goat, now, we can't get confused in this and, and believe that the scapegoat meant that the Most High did not bring judgment for our sin. That's why there's two. The scapegoat is us, in a sense, because we are still able, after we sacrifice our sins, after we repent from it, after we say we atone from it, we are now the scapegoat in front of him. It says in 9, and Elon shall bring the goat upon which the Most High's lot fell. So, whoa, so this goat is the one that is going to be sacrificed because the most high's lot fell and offer him up for a sin offering. So that means, <laughs> right? That means that the most high brings judgment. Leviticus 16, verse 9 dispels the whole concept of Christianity that the Most High loves everybody. He's not bringing forth judgment. Even in his process, even in his festival for atonement, he still brings judgment, but allows our sins, allows us to be able to be atoned for him and still be in his presence. Yes, the disease is gone from us. Yes, we're no longer in our cycle. Yes, we've done this uh, uh, sacrifice for atonement and now we're standing before him, but we are still flesh. We are still dirty rags. Because remember, he says, let no man stand before me and say he has not sinned. Oh, man. I got this. So even in our festival, even in our atonement, that we have to understand that still judgment is being brought forth. His grace and mercy allows us to be the scapegoat that can still stand before him in our iniquity. Oh, I give all praises for the grace and mercy, right? So it says, but the goat on which the lot fell to be scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Most High to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron, and Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer, the same one that his sons died for. Can you imagine that? Aaron has to pick up this censer with the remembrance that his two sons that he raised was killed for not properly handling this censer. You don't think that this process is serious? You don't think that the Most High is serious? that we have to deal with our transgressions constantly. As a father, you feel that pain that you probably didn't do something right which caused your two sons to die. But yet you still have to be a man of the most high that took your children and then turn and give the word to everyone else. Whew. 
we do not take lightly the responsibility that the Most High has put in front of us because power comes with that. It is only people, it is only naysayers that pick at things because they cannot accept their position of owning and holding this type of power. You have the power to be amongst and in the midst of the Most High, to have him hear your supplication, to hear your prayers, to hear your needs, to provide for you all that is in his storehouse for you. This process, this relationship that we have with our Father, with our Creator, is a very real relationship. He is really next to you. because. He knows all your sins. You know all your sins. You made atonement for it. You know what's in your thoughts and what you could do if you felt like you could. It's like Aaron knows that he would not want his children to be killed. If he could take that back and he could say, come on, Most High Man, come on, cut me some slack. He would. If he could slip and slide a little bit, he would. The Most High says, that's why when it comes to my tabernacle, when you are coming into my holy place, there is no if, ands, buts about it. You must come clean. And since I've killed your sons, Aaron, know this from Moshe, that you must come here in a holy state of mind, in a holy cleansed body. You will sacrifice the sin of your bullock. You will put and you will wash your body. You will put on holy garments all in the mindset of giving thanks because you're still living. You still have breath. You may have gone through some trials and tribulations, but you're still in the game. And we're thankful for being in the game. We're overjoyed for the grace and mercy to still be in the game. Because the game means we still have opportunities to atone for our sins. Because when the game is over, there's no more atone. There's no more opportunities to drop to your knees. There's no more opportunities to go admonish yourself. There's no more opportunities to get it right. That's why we take the Feast of Atonement so seriously. It is blood serious. <laughs> So it says, and he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Most High and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Most High, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he died not. So now the Most High is, because you understand how powerful the Most High is, that the mere looking upon him, our flesh cannot handle. So the censors are burning particular things that the Most High wants to smell that Aaron's children decided they would not do. He's telling Aaron to burn these coals and these uh, the, the incense so that there is a cloud of smoke between you and I because he is sitting on the mercy seat because Aaron cannot put his eyes physically upon the Most High. Oh, I give all praises. You have the power to sit amongst the Most High you, you, you are in a position to be in his presence. God, I see you in the building, my brother August in the building. So yeah, the reason why they burn the incense and it's so thick is because when in the temple where the Ark of the Covenant sits, where the mercy seat is, where the Most High or his son Yasha sits, No man can put his eyes upon it. No man's flesh can handle being in the presence of it. So the Most High says we have to have a smoke layer 
in between us. <laughs> so that you don't die, boy. <laughs> and he shall take off the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his fingers upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his fingers seven times for completion. Then, then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering. See, then, only after you've done all this smoke, you'd have made it to where the Most High can now come and be upon his mercy seat. He can now stand you. He has his incense in place. You have cleansed yourself. Now, you can bring in this here. <laughs> Order. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with the and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Yasharala, us, and because of their transgressions in all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place. Whoa. So Aaron has to do all of this by himself. All of these animals, all of these bullocks, he has to kill. He has to sacrifice in a specific manner by himself. Ooh. Power. Power. The power is in the blood. The power is in the understanding that the Most High provided the blood in which you live. And that his son was sacrificed, his blood was shed to cleanse for us. His blood was shed, and that's why you always hear, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. They have no idea. They're just speaking it because it sounds good. I pray tonight that we are fully explaining blood and the power of it from the bacteria aspect to the uncleanliness of it to the cross contamination of it to the to the uh, sprinkling upon the mercy seat as a sacrifice for our sins that all of this none of this can be done without blood and it says But no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement for the holy place until he come out and have made atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Yasharala. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Most High and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his fingers seven times and cleanse it and hallow it and hollow it from the uncleanliness of the children of Yasharala. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat, the scapegoat, the representation of us, Yasharala, and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Yasharala and all the transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man unto the wilderness. So, what happened to this whole Christianity and going bear your sins to some man? 
Where is the line that Aaron was supposed to sit there and listen to everybody come and tell him their iniquity? Hmm. I didn't hear that nowhere. Oh, praise Ashley. I talked to Queen Wanda today. I'm so happy y'all in the building, man. We got some big things coming, man. I talked to Big T. Man. Ooh-wee. <laughs> but anyway, I give all thanks and praise and we acknowledge the Most High because without him, none of the things we're trying to put together would be done. So, as we're saying that no procession of people coming and bearing their sins unto Aaron for him to make atonement for all of Yasharal. But yet it still says that he has to confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Yasharal and all their transgressions in all their sins. Well, how is he supposed to do that? He ain't heard from everybody's mouth. How about sin is sin? How about we just look at the Ten Commandments and just say, you know, all the sins that they can possibly do, <laughs> right? I, most high. And that's why when my sister was saying, and I, that's why I, I bring it back up, because I'm like, as all much as I read, why I never think about that part, right? Because it's like the atonement, the day of atonement is for all, you're supposed to, you know, afflict yourself and think of all the sins that you done did unto people and ask for forgiveness for that. But knowing that we is flesh, <laughs> that we is going to sin again. So why use there, right? Might as well go ahead and say for my future stupidity, I ask for forgiveness while I have the opportunity to stand before you. I mean, we are human, right? <laughs> we, 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 we do get in our feelings about things. We do respond to them things at times, right? <laughs> we, we, we have a tendency to uh, make sure our intentions and feelings are heard. Well, in that, we sin a lot. <laughs> we, 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 transgress, we transgress the law in that process. But Aaron did not have to uh, ask everybody what their sin was. But it's clear to understand that the flesh that we are wrapped in what we are subject unto, our heart. So if Aaron stood over that sheep and, and said over that goat and said, you know, please forgive all of our, all of Yashirala for all the iniquity in their heart, for all of the desires that are unclean. We ask that this goat take those things and go, right? And I will, when we listen to the prophets, the prophets, especially Ezekiel, said, when you are praying unto the Most High, don't be coming with all these words. He don't want no full two pages. He don't want you to explain everything. He was there. <laughs> right? <laughs> he was there. He wants you to repent, ask for forgiveness, keep it moving. But you ain't got to explain how you fell into it, what had happened, that you ain't mean to do it, that you know I'm, I'm trying to. Don't want to hear all that. And the goat don't want to hear it. Neither the goat like, man, can you let me go on my way? <laughs> right, bro? I already got to be checked out here. So then Aaron can't go with the goat. Aaron can't go with the goat. He has to find another man that's probably a Levitical priesthood. Or a fit man. Didn't say it had to be a Levitical priesthood. But a man that was about righteousness to take that scapegoat and not kill it and eat it himself, right? Because goodness knows what happened to him that does that, right? So then it says in 62, and the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities unto the land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. So this goat has all the sins of Yasharala on it. Don't want anybody to come in contact with it. They want to put this goat into a barren land where there's nobody to come in contact with it. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments, which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall lead them there. All right, pay attention to this, that when he goes into the tabernacle of the congregation, he takes them off. And then he shall wash his feet in water in the holy place and put his garments 
and put on his garments. So after he's done this process of moving this sin of all of Yashirala into this goat, he has to now go and wash himself, cleanse himself again, then put the holy garments back on to come forth and offer his burnt offerings and the burnt offerings of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. And he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his, and bathe his flesh in water. And afterwards come into the camp and the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make atonement in this, in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their fleshes and their dung. And he that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come unto the camp. We see how this bathing, but it's cleansing, right? This bathing for the cleansing when you have intercourse is bad. Well, we understand if you don't take a bath, what's the old thing saying? Uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. This is probably why, right? Because it is about keeping your temple clean. When they have people that are on the streets that are absolutely crazy, they always seem to have an odor about them, right? When you read in scriptures, the prophets talk about these demons, they had a stench about them because they are reveling like a pig in their dirt and it says and this shall be a statue for even unto you that in the seventh month on the day on the tenth day of the month ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be cleansed from all your sins before the Most High. So see that there's a process here. And this is the installment of the Day of Atonement, the Feast of Atonement for us, right? With the Day of Atonement, right? Which comes right after our um, um, blowing of the trumpets, right? as we're about to go into the tabernacle. You see how our feast days are set? We blow the shofar, the feast of trumpets. We all bring everybody into a holy congregation. Everybody's coming together. We are now going to go into atonement, and we're all going to give up our sins. We're going to stay in our tents, our homes, while the priest Aaron is doing this for us. And we, are afflicting ourselves. We are asking the Most High to forgive us for our sins as the priest is doing this process for us. So if we're not giving our, we're not giving our prayer or our, we're not giving our confession unto the priest, we're giving our confession unto the only person that matters. That's the Most High. So you're giving your confession to the Most High as the priest is making atonement for your sin. The Catholic Church has it that you go to them, to the priest, you tell him your sins, and then he gives you a lie called the rosary bead and tell you to praise Mary, who's in the heavens, who's supposed to be the, the mother of Yahshua. So now they didn't elevate her to be the queen of heaven. Such lies and doctrine, right? The queen of heaven been around since the pagan days. They've been worshiping a queen up in the sky. Not our heaven, not where the most high sits, because he says nobody sits on his side, right? On his right hand. Huh? Huh? That's that. He says that David is going to be our everlasting king. And, and that Yasha is his right hand. Not sitting on the seat. He is. Same person, same thing. He's the flesh of him. He's the right hand. He's the strong arm of the most high. He said, there is no other gods besides me. I don't know what you're talking about. So, as it says here, so for on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be cleansed from all your sins before the Most High. It shall be 
a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by a statue forever. So this is the installment of our everlasting day of atonement. And this is what we do every year. And the priest whom he shall anoint and whom he shall consecrate, consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead shall make, an, make the atonement and shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments, as Dimitri as well. And he, and the breastplate, right? And the ephod, right? And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary. And he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar. And he shall make an atonement for the priest. So all the priests that's rocking with him under Aaron, make an atonement for them. And for all the people of the congregation. So when we see that the Most High makes our priest do atonement for themselves, then we should all stop looking at these pastors and these so-called priests as they hold them down. And I can't say Father such and such is an idiot, or I can't say Pastor whatever is a dummy. They man, just like you and me. They sin, just like you and me. Me, I sin, just like everybody else. I may be doing a better job. I pray the most high that I'm, you know, curtailing those things, <laughs> right? That I'm circumcising my heart every day, that I'm killing the old man every day. But ain't nobody without sin. Nobody. Nobody's holy than thou. So when it says here that we should not be uh, 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 looking up to these so-called leaders because they read more scripture than you, or because they've been involved in more scripture than you. No, it's about the character of the person, how they walk. Because the Most High said the Torah is something to walk in. Yasha did not come and stand in, in, in some place and just said the words of the Most High. He didn't just regurgitate the scriptures. He walked and lived with man. And he upheld his righteousness. So the Torah is a living, breathing action. It is a way of life for us. And he shall make an atonement for the priest and for all the people of the congregation. And, it, and this shall be an everlasting, everlasting, and everlasting statue unto you to make an atonement for the children of Yasharala for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Most High commanded Moshe to do. And we're going to go on over to this Exodus 33 so we can get a, a full understanding of this process, right? Of, of understanding why we follow the ideology of this world and not what laws that the Most High has put forth for us. Why this society does not want to reference scripture because they have created their scientific world, their high tech world. And if anything that they have created is a resemble of the Bible, then they have to acknowledge that Yasha is here, that the most high exists. So they created the, the scientific method, which means that if you can't reproduce it two or three times, then it is what they call an anomaly. And it is not a scientific fact, meaning, i.e., if winter didn't come around every year, if the seasons didn't change every year, then it would not be a scientific fact, even though we know it, it is the law and the order of the Most High. They say it's a scientific fact. What the Most High does is in order, in random, in spontaneous, it is whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And no man can dictate when the father does his work. When Yahshua was being tempted by the devil and he put him on top of the synagogue and said, man, look at here. Won't you jump off of it? If your father sent you here, then surely he'll save you. And Yahshua said to him, I do. I will not tempt my father. I will not tempt my father. So 
we have to 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 be clear that what this world is is the opposite of the most high they'll tell you about these natural disasters and they'll say it's happening in biblical measure and then they go run into some science about the barometers how big the hurricane is how bad the earthquake is how much lava is in the volcano and just skip right over the fact that this is the will of the most high in Exodus 33, it reads, And the Most High said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Until thy seed will I give it, and I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites and Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. Now, understanding these are Japheth and Hermetic people. And when I say Ham and Japheth, that means you can add whatever you want in there. Uh, uh, Germans, you can add Africans, you can add Egypt, you can add Turkish people, all of the above, all right? In these doggone tribes right here. And the Most High said, just like you don't need to go to some preacher, some pastor, and give him your sins. Most High said, you ain't got to go and fight them. When you give your sins unto me, when you atone unto me, I will kill all of your enemies. I will make them your footstool. And here it says, and I will send, he said, and I will send an angel before thee. And I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, unto a Unto a land with um, flowing with milk and honey, for I will go up out in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. So the Most High is saying, I'm going to clear these people out because I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's going to be the land of milk and honey. It's going to be everything I promised it to be. But for art thou stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Because the Most High is like, remember, it took us 40 days, I mean, um, 40 years in the desert to get to our place. In that process, he had to kill the elders that only the young and Joshua were able to cross over. So he's referencing that and said, unless I consume thee all in the way. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. So the Most High comes to them in the wilderness and says, this is what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to kill you. And the people heard this and was like, I don't know if I want to go. You know, like the most high just threatened to kill me if I don't do it the right way. I don't know if I, because I'm stiff necked, right? He says, they mourned and no man did put on his ornaments, his clothing, right? For the Most High said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Yashirala, Ye are stiff-necked people. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee that I may know what to do unto thee. So now the Most High is upset with these boys because they won't come and hear what he has to tell them. Because they're scared. Fear. Either because you know you're full of iniquity and you don't want to change, you don't want to break yourself. Or is it because you know that you don't deserve to live. That your thoughts, your desires are wicked continually. Or how about you just know you don't well deserve it? 
Either way, the most high said, I, I could care less about what how you feel. You are my seed. Cleanse yourself and come before me. For the most high. And he says, therefore, now put off thy ornaments from thee that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Yashirala stripped themselves of their ornaments by the mouth of Hera, by Mount Hera, Hera. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Most High went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone unto the tabernacle. And it came to pass. As Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Most High talked with Moses. Remember, this is Exodus before Leviticus. Leviticus is when he puts in the priesthood of Aaron and all of them. At this moment, everybody, Aaron and all are included, are afraid. And they're looking at Moses speaking directly with the Most High. And it says, Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Most High talked with Moses. So this wasn't, so people didn't think that uh, 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 Moses was just going into a tent and coming out with these words and saying, y'all need to do this. Like, yeah, I went to meditation. And yeah, the Most High talked to me about meditation. He told me that you, Aaron, you a punk. And told me that your boy over there, you saw, and told me, yeah, I need to have four or five wives, and y'all need to go ahead and start making sacrifices around here unto me. Now, they knew that Moses was in contact with the Most High when his pillars of clouds came and went over the tabernacle that Moses was inside of. That scared people. Because they're stiff-necked. Their hearts weren't in place. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man at his tent door. So they just dropped to their knees right there. And the Most High spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. Ooh. And he turned again unto the camp. But his servant Joshua, who took us over, the son of Nun, a young man departed not out of the tabernacle. So everybody else ran. But Joshua stayed in the tabernacle by Moses. Like he wasn't scared. I wonder why Joshua was the one that led everybody over to Jericho. Might be this right here. That he didn't have any fear of the Most High. That he had only love and respect and honor for the Most High. So it says, a young man departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Most High, See, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. And thou hast also found grace in my sight. So the Most High told Moses as they're talking face to face. Moses is saying, man, you know, you ain't tell me who's going to go with me. You, you ain't told me who's going to be the one leading. He's thinking it's Aaron, right? Because Aaron is the one that talked to Moses into taking the people out. Remember that Moses came down to deal with the Israelite problem. And Aaron told Moses that he was an Israelite. Remember, Moses was raised as an Egyptian. He thought he was an Egyptian. He came to deal with the nigga slave problem. And when he got there, the Aaron told him, yo, our God, the most high, told us that 
He will send someone, and you're the one. Then Moses had to go and check and say, what? Me? Then him and the Most High had their conversation. Moses accepted who he was. And now we're out of Exodus, out of Egypt. All is done. And now Moshe is talking with the Most High. And he's saying, you told me you picked somebody else. You didn't tell me who it was. But that he found grace in your sight. And he says, now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. So Moses is saying, okay, I pray thee that if I found grace in your eyes, Most High, that you will tell me who this particular person is and then I can find grace in that. I want to be in the grace of that person's sight because this is who you pick. Now, Moses let everybody out of Egypt, but Moses is so humble and so meek that he's like, Most High, I just want to meet the man that you're going to have, take everybody to the promised land because I want to be in his good graces too, because this is what you chose. Oh, I'm talking about the power and how men will act with each other when they're thinking in the mindset of the most high. Moses ain't got no jockeying for position. Moses ain't caring about who's listening to him and who's not. He's trying to be in the good graces of the most high, and he wants to be in the good graces of the people that the most high has touched. He wants to be fully in with his brethren in love. Oh, yes. And it says, that I may know thee, I may know Joshua, that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is his people. And he said, and he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. So he's telling Moses, I'm about to give you rest, right? And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? He said, if they're not going to go up, then, then how are everybody going to know we found grace in your sight? Is it not in that thou, is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated and, and say, separated I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? So now Moses is saying to the Most High, hold up. You telling us that um, in thy presence go not with me and carry us not up hence. So Moses said, we're not going with you, Most High. Then, then how are these other people going to know that we had your grace and mercy that you took us out of Egypt? And he says, are you going to leave us? Are you going to be separated us? And he says, well, I and thy people from all thy people that are upon the earth. So are you going to separate us from all the people that's on the earth? When we say that we are set apart, that is what it is. When we are saying that the rest of this world has this mindset that we don't follow, that we follow a set apart mindset, that we believe that everything that happens in our life is by the most high. The world believes that it's scientific method, that it is something that they continue to reproduce and that you're inside of their matrix, their cycle, and that all things happen according to the way that they make it. And their explanation. But we are a set apart people. And 17 it says. And the Most High said unto Moses. I will do this thing also. That thou hast spoken. But thou hast found grace in my sight. And I know thee by name. Mm. And he said. I beseech thee. Show me thy glory. And he said. And this is Moses asking the Most High, can I see your glory? Now, we say this is Moses talking to the Most High, but really it's Yasha, but it's his right hand that should die. It's the spirit of the Most High that speaks unto man. Moses is not asking for Yasha to, 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 to show him his glory, even though he's standing before the Most High talking to him, to, you know, he still wants to see the whole image of the Most High. And he said, I will make all my goodness. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee 
and I will and I will proclaim the name of the Most High before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. Who and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face. Oof. So the Most High tells him, I will make all my goodness before thee. As you're trying to see my full image, he said, don't worry. You're going to see all the great and good things that I do will be before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Most High before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy upon whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. So when we talk about the greatness of the entity that we call our creator that has sent forth his mouthpiece, his right hand, his strong arm, his destroyer and his salvation, that when he meets amongst us, we can't stand to be before it. Moses is everything to us, right? He's the Torah. He's everything to the Most High. He knew his name. He allowed him to bring everybody out of Egypt. But in Moses' flesh, he could not stand and truly see the entire glory of the Most High. When we saw in Leviticus later, he made Aaron, the Most High made Aaron burn incense and make a cloud of smoke to separate him from the Most High's image, for he would die. Mm. Mm. I see in the building, Monica. And the Most High said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by, and I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. So for Moses, because Moses put this request in, the Most High said, this is what I do for you. You can go up in the, in the uh, cliff, right? You can put you, uh, he said, I shall, uh, I shall, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a cliff. So the rock is obviously a mountain, right? So he says you will stand upon a rock. You're going to stand upon the mountain. And upon that mountain, I'm going to put you in a cliff when I'm passing by, because the front of me, you cannot stand. But you can see me from behind past you. You can catch that part of the glory since this is your request. The power that we have to be amidst something that is so great that has created everything that man lies about and said they've done. Go to the moon. Go to Mars. Go to all these different places, do these different things. When the Most High said to us that the angels that fell from the heavens be bound to the earth, and we now have reports that the aliens that's been amongst us have been in the water beneath the earth. I showed you guys Jason A the other night when it talked about all of the third of the birds and the third of this and the third of the fish all dying, which is directly in our scripture and revelation. We have to be clear that the most high hand is being shown right now. And we are not capable of seeing his face. We are absolutely incapable. If Moses is incapable of doing it, you better believe we are incapable of doing it. His glory is our salvation the fact that we know we have grace and mercy through him that is his face unto us 
that is his hand unto us, us that have his testimony. And what's that? That he did send someone to die for our sins, that he did take Moses and the boys out of Exodus, that we have the testimony of our creator. That is the only thing that gives us grace and mercy amongst man and all of man's concepts, turmoils, lies, and death. Man tells you that you catch a disease because you have a desire to have sex. That's what venereal, remember, venereal means the desire for intercourse. And a venereal disease means uh, because you had sex, you got a disease. According to that, then every time somebody had a child or every every wife and husband, you know, husband and wife, that every time they have venereal disease, that is not true. That is not facts. We understand that this disease and these things come from being uncleanliness due to the blood. That the blood is the life. That blood carries the bacteria that we need. Blood carries the enzymes that we need. Blood carries the healing. <laughs> it carries the life. And life is an organism. If that organism ecosystem is thrown off, it is sick. It is diseased. It is virus. So the father has laid out in a Levitical order how to sterilize, how to be clean within our blood, how to clean our blood once we have gone astray, and how to give sacrifice unto him for a burnt and sin offering to thank him for cleansing us of this. Knowing that the blood is the power. As we are finishing up the night tonight, we are going to Psalms 62. What's up, burning in the building, my brother? Man, all praise for you being in here, man. You caught us on a short night. You think we go about three hours. Tonight is going to be about two and a half hours. But, um, you know, about two hours. You know, I'm trying to, trying to get by. And even Scott, you can ask, Scott comes usually after an hour and a half, like we used to do when we were going to church, when we knew that the church was for an hour. So we come at the last 30, 45 minutes of the church, get a little bit of the sermon. You heard me get that little wafer and roll out. <laughs> I'm messing with you, Scott. My brother, love you, man. So, um, but what we are on tonight, is understanding the power of our blood, understanding the power of atoning for our sins, the power of being cleansed in the Most High, and how that is the way we're supposed to stand before him. Understanding that our flesh in itself is unclean. That when we interact with the other human races in an intimate manner, we are uncleansed. That we must clean ourselves, that even if you are solo in your uh, sexual intercourse, that you are still uncleansed and anything that you touch is uncleansed. And that you need to bathe and that you're uncleansed until the evening of the next day. Or I guess if you did it early that morning till the next, to the, to the evening that day, right? So we are understanding that these things that we call taboo that we don't like to talk about menstrual cycles, having sex while a woman's on her cycle, all of these type of things that we will consider nasty or, or wild things is where the enemy uses to add confusion and, and create their own ideology and tell you that what you're doing has something to do with venereal, has something to do with the desire of sex. No, it has to do with your blood and it has to do with the fact that you're uncleansed and that you're doing an act that makes you uncleansed and that you're not supposed to look at it in some, you know, Romeo, Juliet thing that look at it from the most highest perspective who's looking at you. Yes, the beauty of it is for us as humans that you have uh, uh, um, been able to be with the person of your desire, that you have become on one accord with this particular human being. And that you guys loving the most high, loving each other, and that this is the fancy of your eye. That is the pleasure that the Father has allowed us to have. Everything about being in this flesh isn't a punishment, right? 
but it's only when we do what's in our flesh out of order is when it's a problem. And this particular thing, when it's done out of order, creates diseases, creates death, creates this lie of a society that has given you science and pharmaceuticals that do not heal, that only keeps you on the drugs until you stop doing the thing that gave it to you. Understand what I'm saying clearly that the medical industry, if it was righteous, it would be about repenting, which is what the scripture is, meaning that you do not do it anymore. Meaning that when you go to the doctor and he tells you that you are overweight, you have high blood pressure, he would tell you stop eating pork. And you have to stop eating it or you die, <laughs> right? It's simple. It's called repentance. No medication. He'll tell you, okay, looking at your chart, uh, you know what I'm saying, Mr. Farrelly? You're looking at your chart that you have been uh, high cholesterol, meaning that you got a lot of cheese in your body. You've eaten a whole bunch of cheese. I see that you got high blood pressure and that you uh, uh, got some uh, anxiety. Oh, so you're eating a lot of pork and a lot of salt, a lot of high sodium in your body. So this is all the doctor is telling you. He's reading off for your diet chart of the things that you know you did. You know what you eat. You know what you do with your body. So when the doctor's sitting there telling you all these things, this is why you're having this way, you're waiting for him to give you a drug that will allow you to live your life, that you can eat these unclean things, you can put these unclean things into your body and then take their lie pill and you can still just be alive and still be in your iniquity. That's what science, that's what the medical industry is. And our scripture says, look, you ain't got to go to all that. Repent, the same thing they're going to tell you to do. They got it from us, so I know they're going to tell you to do it. Repent. Stop eating unclean foods. Stop putting yourself in unclean environments. Stop doing unclean things with your blood. And your disease will go away. Then you are thankful to the Most High. You go and make your sacrifices unto Him. And then now you are cleansed. But a lot of us are sensitive. Because that's how the world makes us. Because the world got us on every drug to take uh, put estrogen in men so that all these young boys, these youngsters is all feminine, eat feminine, thinking about homosexuality. Homosexuality is running our society and it's not by accident. The society of the scientists are your, Rome, your Roman Greeks and your Egyptians. And all three believed in having sex with kids and having male or same-sex marriage lifestyle. All three of them in antiquity did it. So much that you have, I don't want to say a derogatory term, but you have people that call themselves professors, that call themselves teachers, that tell you that because they can find it in antiquity, that this behavior is not unclean, but that this is part of human nature. Do you guys see the slippery slope from scripture and righteousness and cleanliness? to the slippery slope of, well, you know, we got to have babies, so we got to have sex. How can that be unclean? Well, we just need to put this condom on. Oh, we just need to do this thing. Mo, my brother, before you entered that woman, did you ask her about her eating habits? Do you know what type of bacteria that you're getting involved with? Queen, do you know the bodily fluids of the man that you're looking at? Does he have regular bowels? Does how does he, how does his skin look? Is it clear? Does he have any blood diseases? Have you checked any of those things? Because sometimes you can't just tell that by just looking at them when they got the right suit on, when they got the right outfit on it, and it's couture. <laughs> when it's couture, <laughs> right? Are you entering a, 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 a clean vessel? Or are you looking to enter a vessel that fits your physical requirements? When we are understanding that the world creates it for us to do it without order, that is all that it means. And yet this world is telling you that it's bringing in a new world order. The old one was do as thy wilt. That was what they called the Pisces, where you could create and build and do whatever. They were now into Aquarius, right, which they say everything has to be proven. Everything is locked down now. So now we're about to go into captivity again, which is Jacob's trouble. 
So in this, in this captivity, in this lockdown, what are you going to consider clean and unclean? What are you going to consider as the new world order? It's not do as thy will. The new world order is you do as they will, as the Antichrist is saying. That's why you have to have your mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. That's why you have to know where your camps are. That's why you're going to have to fall into, fall into the new world order of the UN as your government. There is one law, and that's what we're reading, the book of Leviticus. That law doesn't change. So as we get, see what y'all talking about. Yes, my brother, Adam. Right. Christian mentality is that they believe anything they do is all right. All they got to do is... Uh, I guess go on Sunday and, you know, put a little holy water on and do whatever thing they do and, and, and Jesus love them. So you don't have to look into the law. You don't have to look on if you're clean or not. If somebody is telling you not to be, don't, don't worry about that clean thing, man. Don't worry about that, bruh. Just go and do you. Jesus loves you. He loves everybody, right? You can't follow these laws anyway. These laws are too grievous. It tells you to pluck your eye out if your eye wants to be up air. And it says, Psalms 62. Chief musician, Judathan, Judathan, yeah, Judathan, yeah, Judathan. A Psalm of David. Truly, my soul waited upon the Most High. From him cometh my salvation, not this world. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall. Come on, guys. I see we, I think we got back up. Um, it's kicked out all my settings, but that's all right, guys. We are going to uh, get through this year. Let me get that a little better. Hopefully all of the, um, all the other platforms are in there. You can hear now. All right, everybody can hear. We, we, yeah, yeah, the system is going crazy, guys. The system is going crazy. You know we got hacked uh, by Russia. So, um, you know, we are um, trying to get back to it. My scene right here. Oh, all right, we back. 
All right, guys. Uh, let's get to it. Let y'all out of here. I said I was going to be out early, so I guess most high telling me get to it. <laughs> so I'm going to get to it. All right. So, all right, so we all glad you joined in with us. We have had our difficulties, but we're back in the building, baby. So here we go. And it says, um, he, uh, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain of you, all of you, as a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence shall be. Hold up. Did, did it crash again on me? No. All right. I keep getting these things. All right. I'm going to go fast. You got how long? So it says, the only consult to cast him down from his excellency, the delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they car but they curse inwardly. Say lies. It says the on they only consult to cast him down from his excellence. A lot of times people are only gonna speak with you just so they can try and get one up on you. They just want to get you to say something so that therefore they can now try and bring you down from your position. And it says, My soul, wait thou only upon the most high, for my expectation is from him. Oh. He is, um, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In the most high is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my salvation. My refuge is in the most high. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. The most high is a refuge for us. Say la. So uh, I, my computer will not allow me to uh, move down on the scripture. So I'm going to read it from my book. And we're going to thank the most high that we have the ability to, to, to continue no matter how they try to throw us out. So we're on verse 9. Verse 9 says, Surely men of low degree are vanity. Men of low degree are vanity. And men of high degree are a lie to be laid in the balance. Mm. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Ooh, so read it again. Surely men of low degree are vanity. And men of high degree are a lie to be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression. And become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Allah has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. The power belongs unto the Most High. Also unto you. O Adonai, belong mercy. And you render to every man according to his works. Understand when we talk about the works of a man and a woman clears up their sins. The works, the good works of a man and woman covers all of their iniquity. It makes up for all that they, they have done. So here on 12, it says, also unto you and Adonai belongs mercy for you render to every man according to his work. So when it's talking about also to you, Adonai, we're talking about Yahshua. We're talking about the right-hand man. We're talking about the one that's going to bring judgment because the Most High said he died for y'all's sins. So therefore, I'm giving him the right to judge you. So it says that mercy belongs unto Yahshua that's going to judge us. Then you render to, according to every man unto his work. So it says, according to my works. How I am amongst my brothers and sisters. How clean I keep my blood. How much I don't cross contaminate with these people of this world. How much that I recognize and respect what he has instilled in me. This blood and this law that he has given me. He says every man gets according to that work. That your Belief in doing righteousness 
your belief and not just the words that you hear and that you read, but walking in it. When you walk in it, you receive your grace, your salvation and your mercy. And it's not going to look like nothing of this world. So don't try and compare it. It's not going to look like anything in this world. It's going to be your very own creation from your creator. Understand that you are creating every day. You're creating your world. You're creating your holy space within the most high. When you kill your old man daily and you deal with the people in your life with the scripture, with the loving kindness that Yasha had for us, right? The same people that killed him. When you do that, you are creating a home, an environment, a workplace, a life that is surrounded by people that are righteous or at least respect the righteousness in you. Because as it said, that the people will come at you to pull you down from your excellence. They will speak to you not because they want to hear about your walk, not because they want to know about your walk, but how they can discredit your walk, how they can discredit your efforts, how they can say that what you do for them is nothing. That is what they do. They say, it's nothing that you do for me, but I do want you to understand that I love you. <laughs> right? It's, I just want to know about what you're doing. You, you can't do nothing for me, but, but I just want to know what you're doing. If you're not trying to follow this, if you're not trying to walk this, why are you asking me about this? Because you want to pull me from my excellence. Because you don't want to follow it. You don't want to do it. You just want to see where I'm wrong so that you can continue to be wrong because that's what the scientific method is. If I can continue to do something wrong, then I can prove that it's being done. If I can get you to do it, then I can prove that you ain't who you say you are. You are not a priest. You are not Judah. You are not a daughter of Zion. You are a Gentile in his iniquity with us. No, you're not. You are set apart. You are the Yahudim. You are his special inheritance on this earth. He has given you his law to keep you from being sick. He has given you his law so that you won't go astray. He has given you his law so you don't walk into the quicksand. I give all praise to the Most High. And that is the end of, verse of uh, Psalm 62. As we know, the internet is going crazy, kicking everybody out. I see you in the building, my brother, Big Chief Black. Um, so I'm going to let everybody go tonight, you know. <laughs> yeah, they didn't want to, uh, the crowds in the barrel supposed to eat or be around. Yeah, eat or be eaten. That's what the society wants us to believe that is eat or be eaten, you know, is survival of the fittest, is uh, kill or be killed. Most High says that he will send out his angels to go and kill the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Ammonites, all of the knights that are around that say that they are better than the Most High. They got a better plan than the Most High and they are more righteous than you. The Most High said, I'm going to send my angels for them. All I need you to do is to blow the trumpet of righteousness. That's what I need you to do. I need you to keep your blood clean. You need to keep your spirit clean. You need to keep your hands clean and blow the show for righteousness. And everything else, you're going to watch it tumble down. Yeah, you're going to see them stand before you. Yeah, they're going to look all big and bad. They're going to be screaming. They're going to be doing a whole bunch of things. But your peace, your calm, your salvation comes from knowing that you're following those commandments. Knowing that your blood is clean. Knowing that you're doing everything to be clean. Nobody can take that from you. You did that work. No one can disparage that work. You know the work that you've done. So we'll rejoice in that. That's our show for tonight. Um, I pray all you guys have enjoyed and understood uh, the many wild things we had to discuss tonight from 
uh, masturbation to to diseases, to venereal diseases, STDs, to to cleanliness, to the blood, cleanse, you know, all these things, man. I pray that they are no longer mis, mis, uh, mysteries of how the Most High would deal with it, or how the Most High has laid the law for us to deal with these things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, that we are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. So we give that, we pray that you all have an eye to see and an ear to hear tonight. Um, all praises. Yes, the meal is complete. Thank you, my brother Adon. Now, I'm going to try and close this thing down, but like I said, all my stuff is going haywire, crazy, crazy. So, um, uh, like I said, thank you for the most high for allowing this word to go forward tonight. I pray that you and your family are covered in his grace and mercy and know how powerful your blood is and know how powerful your prayers are. Mishalom.